Parshas Shmos. This week we are going to start a new Sefer, a new book, and that is the book of Shmos. And it starts with the first Parsha in the book, which is Parshas Shmos. The book, the Sefer, is named after the first Parsha. Now there are many things in this Parsha. We begin to hear about the subjugation of the Jews in Egypt. I want to speak about a later portion of the Parsha, which begins in chapter 3, when Hashem finally decides to redeem the Jewish people, to take them out of Egypt, and He chooses Moshe, Moses, who we call Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe our teacher, to take the Jewish people out of Egypt. So let's begin. Chapter 3. And Moshe was grazing the sheep of Yisro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he would lead the sheep into the desert, and he came to the mountain of God to Chorev. What questions arise from this verse? First of all, why is Moshe bringing the sheep to the desert? It seems kind of far. So why does he bring them there? Second, this mountain is called Har HaElokim, and we're told this is Chorev. What is the mountain of God, also known as Chorev? This is Mount Sinai, where God is going to reveal himself to the Jewish people at the revelation of Sinai. This is the place where the Jewish people are going to receive the Torah from Hashem, and where God will actually speak to him. So it's called the mountain of God. But the question is, is it the mountain of God because God is going to reveal himself to Moshe now? Or is it the mountain of God because of what's going to happen in the future when God reveals himself to Moshe? So let's see how Rashi answers these questions. Verse 1. Achar HaMedbar, after the desert. Rehit Rachek Men HaGezel, to distance himself from stealing, from robbery. According to Rashi, Moshe brings the sheep to a very far place, far from civilization, for one reason alone. He's so careful about other people's property that he wants to make sure that his father-in-law's sheep do not eat from a field that belongs to someone else. He wants to make sure that, they, that Yisro does not end up stealing because of Moshe. So he brings them to the one place which is uninhabited, to a place which nobody owns, namely the desert. And he'll travel very far in order to ensure that he does not steal at all. So already in the first verses in this chapter, we see, according to Rashi, Moshe's greatness. He's a pious person. He cares about other people. He cares about their property. And he doesn't want to steal. Let's continue with Rashi. And where he explains, Shalom Yeru bestows Acherim, why does Moshe bring them to the desert so that they should not graze in others' fields, like we just explained? Next, Rashi, to the mountain of God. Al Shem Ha'atid. It's called this because of what's going to happen in the future. So Rashi answers our second question here, which is when does this mountain really become the mountain of God? According to Rashi, not yet. But rather, because in the future, the Jewish people are going to accept the Torah and this mountain. They're going to communicate with God on a very high level when Hashem will reveal Himself at Sinai. And then, it's going to become the mountain of Hashem, the mountain of God. Now, Sfarno explains a little bit differently. Sfarno says, if you look, the verse says, Moshe brings the sheep to the desert and he comes to the mountain of God. Now, you and I know that the mountain of God or Sinai, otherwise known as Chorev here, is in the desert. But Sparno says a little differently, and he says, Moshe brings the sheep to the desert, and then he himself goes to Chorev. He goes to the mountain of God. And why? He goes there to meditate, to pray. According to Sparno, Moshe is trying to communicate to God. He's trying to connect to Him. And at that point, he receives this revelation of, from Hashem. Continuing verse 2. And an angel of God appeared to him in the flame of the fire from within the thorn bush. And he saw, and behold, the thorn bush, the sneh, 
is burning with fire. That's net and Anu Kal. But the thorn bush is not being consumed. Vayomer Moshe and Moshe said, Asura na there eh, et hamar eh, hagadol hazeh. Let me turn to see this great vision, this great thing that's happening. Madu lo yivar hasneh. Why isn't the bush burning? We're just told it's burning. So what he means is, why isn't the bush burning up? Why isn't it being consumed? Continuing in verse 4. Vayar Hashem and God saw a kisar l'rot that he turned to look. Vayikra alav and he called to him Elokim and God called to him mitoch hasneh from within the bush. Vayomer and he said, Moshe, Moshe, Moses, Moses, Vayomer. And he said, Hineni, here I am.